Good morning, everybody. This is Kevin Witt of Kevin Witt Basketball Services, and we are back for our third installment of Development 360. You know, the, this show really came about in my mind because uh, I want to really highlight a lot of players and coaches that are have coached at the highest level and, uh, and also people that are just involved with the game of basketball. But for the most part, I like to talk to guys that have really done everything from a 360 standpoint. That means they got involved with the game, they uh, they were mentored, coached, played. Now they, they've gone into other endeavors of, uh, of coaching, uh, et cetera, going into business, everything. And now they've made that full circle back. And uh, this morning, our guest really exemplifies that, that I'm bringing in, Tamar Slay. Uh, he's done that. Uh, he's been a, uh, he's from uh, Virgin West Virginia, uh, played his college basketball at Marshall, and then uh, went on to the professional ranks. He was drafted into the NBA, and we're going to talk more about that. He also played overseas, and he also married into my family. So uh, I'm really excited about talking to him this morning. I think he's on now. I think Tamar is waving in, and we're going to get him to join in. Let me find you right quick, Tamar. Let's see what's going on here. Uh... I see Celeste. Yeah, I'm just waiting for Tamar to just uh, <clears throat> uh, come in here and we can get started. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Yeah. Let's see where you are right now. All right, here we go. But well, anyway, while he's coming on, um, again, yeah, you know, tomorrow is going full circle with all of this. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, brother? How, How you, you doing, doing, man? Good, good. Yeah. You good? Yeah, I'm doing well, man. How about you? How you doing this morning? Oh, man, I'm great, man. Turn your phone this way. I'm kind of like, I'm like this right now. Would oh, you, are you? Hey, bring okay. it around, baby. <laughs> My bad. Let me. Uh, I got. I got you on the stand here. Let me see if really? I can that thing around there. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah you're good. Hold on one second. I got you. No problem. Take your time, man. Uh, I'll just uh, tell everybody basically, you know, about uh, your history a little bit. Uh, why you setting up? Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. How you going full circle with everything? Yeah, yeah, I was listening in to that, man. Yeah, it's uh, it had that's that's a great way to put it. Three sixty, I think. Uh, I, I like that. I like that because that's what uh, you know, as coaches and mentors and you know all the stuff that we do for these young athletes, man. That's what we want. We want uh, you want them to make that three sixty where you know where they can go from you know being a student athlete to a pro, whatever the case, if not a pro, into you know the, the real world and uh, being able to handle you know, different life obstacles that's thrown at them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I won't waste no time. I mean, I, I, it, like I said, I've always been impressed with you from afar. I, mean, I remember, you know, hearing about you when you were just, a, you know, wet behind the ears, man. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, because you know, of, you know, I, I, you know, family, you know, Lenny Simpson yeah. uh, was really, you know, he's a, a distant cousin of mine, but, you know, he took me under his wing when I got to college. And uh, right. you know, brought me in. I was basically like his son, you know. And yeah. uh, they they took care of him and his wife, you know, Joanne. And you know, obviously, I met the girls, which you know, Celeste and Jen. And you know, you married Celeste, and you know, everything. Right. The whole night, you know, she went to Marshall, and that's where you guys met. I remember hearing about you then. You know, this is when you know I'm just starting to really get further along in my career, and right. you know, I started you know watching you and observing you from afar, and. You know, I was always, you know, happy. I was happy when I saw you when you made it, you know, drafted by uh, the net. Yeah. You know, spent that time. And, you know, talk about that experience, man, of, uh, you know, playing for the Nets and, you know, and yeah. and going through that. I think you, because you played for, uh, you played for Lawrence, right? Uh, Lawrence and, and Barbara. Barbara Scott. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that, I mean, that, that is a, it is a funny story, man, of how I remember at Marshall when Celeste and I first met. And, uh, you know, she was telling me about her big brother, you know, Kevin Witted. And I heard your name all the time. And, 
Lenny spoke so highly of you and you know, I was, you know, always itching to meet you. And, and a funny story about how we met was, uh, you know, we were out at the NBA Summer League. And I seen someone, we kind of was sizing each other up, like looking like, man, I know you from somewhere. And then we, uh, you know, uh, we ended up meeting for the first time, which was, uh, you know, a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, but, you know, uh, coming from, uh, you know, a little town in Beckley, West Virginia, man, getting drafted into the NBA was, uh, you know, uh, something that that that's near and dear to my heart always will be uh, uh, one of the best feelings I ever had in my life. You know, on June 26th when they called my name, uh, mm. because it was not not just for the simple fact of getting drafted into the NBA. It's just because of uh, you know, I had a a goal in mind, and that that was to play in the NBA, and and able to to be able to accomplish that goal was was so fulfilling in so many ways, uh, not just for basketball reasons, but, you know, it helped my family out. Uh, you know, it, it, it changed, it changed the, uh, the landscape of my family. Uh, and, you know, basketball, that's why I care so much about the game because, you know, when you talk about breaking, breaking uh, generational curses and you talk about the family uh, background and things like that where, you know, we don't have the resources. We don't have, you know, uh, the, the things that we need in the community that we grow up in. And when you're able to provide that for your family, uh, a guy like me, I want other families to experience that too. So, uh, you know, that's why, mm -hmm. you know, I started Tomorrow Slay Basketball. Man, well, I tell you, man, yeah, we're going to talk about all that, man. I, um, You know, just – you know, thinking about your, your, your career and, you know, where you've been and all the people that that's touched your life and you come in contact with, you know, that's the reason why I wanted to have you on because, you know, so many times, you know, especially in player development, you know, we both are involved with that. You know, we've seen an influx of guys coming in, you know, guys that work with you that, you know, they've never really had that experience that you and I have had in terms of being a player, being under the situations, dealing with the circumstances that are involved, dealing with the adjustments of playing in America, going overseas, uh, being away from family, uh, dealing with, you know, the, the, the dialect of, of different countries, you know, uh, dealing with just the whole aspect of being away from everything and then, you know, doing what you have to do to survive there. And then also, you know, coming back. And, uh, and and get it, and still staying involved with it at a high level, uh, and so our experiences are similar. You know, yeah. we had that. You know, you know, you obviously you played a little longer in the league than I did. You know, I had my opportunity. You know, with the Mavericks, and I, you know, I got a I got a taste of it. But most of my career was really overseas, and that's why I spent most of my time. And that's where we have that connection because you spent how many years over? I think ten. Uh, nine. Nine. Yeah, I spent nine years. Yeah, so I mean, you were, uh, where were you? Uh, I know you were in Israel one time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I started out. Yeah, that's where I started out. So my my, my journey was uh, overseas, was uh, I signed with a team out of uh, Spain. They ended up folding after I left. Askevahu was the name of it in Girona, Spain. So I went there and uh, real, you're talking about wet behind the ears. I, I knew nothing about European basketball at all. I was coming straight from college to the league and then I went over there and I wasn't ready for it mentally right so I was my, my whole goal was like I'm about to go over here and kill these cats and I'm going back to the league <laughs> I'm gonna get 30 I'm gonna get 30 a night and I need to be back where I belong and uh I didn't have the right attitude when I went over there mm -hmm. and uh you know it was just so different you know we we were practicing two three times a day you had to yeah. warm up you had to warm up in the uh I remember warming up in the woods and I can remember smelling cow manure and just running like two miles for your warm up. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this is, you know, this is, this is not maybe what I want. Uh, but you know, I kept driving, kept pushing. But anyway, I was coming off of surgery when I got there and then, uh, you know, I wasn't ready. I probably had trained a month. So I wasn't in my tip top shape and I ended up getting hurt again, ended up getting a stress fracture. And, you know, it was, I was like, yes, they, they don't want me no more. I get to go back home and then I can just take my time rehab and get back. And then uh, my agent called me and said, Jerusalem uh, had an offer for me. And I'm like, 
Right. What, what are you talking about, bro? And he said, mm-hmm. yeah, in Israel. I was like, do they even play basketball there, right? Uh, so uh, I ended up, you know, he was like, well, let's go over there for a while and just see if you like it. Let's go over basically just to test the team out, see if you like the coach. And my good, my, my buddy that we had uh, played together with for the USA team, uh, Roger Mason, uh, yeah. and we had the same agent at the time. Uh-huh. He uh, he called me. He was playing for the team at the time. It was like, look, man, just come over and check it out. I went over and loved it. Ended up spending two years there. And then uh, once that was finished, I went to Italy and finished and played eight, eight years in Italy. Wow. Now, you know, you had a little pit stop in there now for a minute. Now, you, you went to the league I coached in. I think you were there maybe, was it half a year? I think half you were a year, in, yep. yeah. Out in Cali. You were out mm-hmm. of uh, Bakersfield. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was in Bakersfield because that's what happened. The second year in Jerusalem, uh, I left middle of the season. Uh, again, I was young, man. You know, I wanted to get back into the league, and I didn't yeah. feel that they were playing me the way I should have been played. I was, you know, playing out of position. Uh, sometimes I didn't start, and I didn't really understand the whole European approach. You know, it wasn't about stats or anything like that. You know what I mean? You you got to fit in. What's your role? One night we may need you for 30 minutes. The other night we may need you 12, 13. Uh, and I, I wasn't <laughs> that open uh, to accepting that at the time. You know, yeah. I look back now, you know, man, those, those were great situations, great teams, and I would have I had a totally different mindset. Uh, so, again, that's where, as we were just talking about, our experiences come in when we got you know, a young fella that's, you know, right there on the fence of maybe getting into the league or yeah. playing overseas. Like, you got to be willing to accept your role when you go over there, uh, whatever that role may be. They may need you to get 20 or they may need you to play five minutes, you know what I'm saying, one night. Mm-hmm. You got to be willing to accept that. If not, they, you know, they'll find someone else. Yeah, and uh, that's that's the why I brought that up because, <laughs> you know, I felt like that that's what was really – really preparing you for where you are today. I, I, I think all those, all those steps that we take, you know, we, uh, and we, we're trying to question all the time on our way up. We don't realize we're being set up for something. Cause I feel like that was what happened right. with me. You know, getting cut, you know, playing in uh, the CBA to all those leagues. I got a chance to see the real true grind of everything. I also saw a lot of guys that should have been there that didn't make it based on this right. or based on that that based on another situation and right. you've seen that as well. So we have a lot of insight when we start mentoring players. And yeah. the thing is that that's what that's what's needed today. Uh we, we have to be in a position where we can give that insight about where we've been, what we've seen, all the do's and the don'ts. But the main thing is we give all the guys the answer, all the do's. You know, yeah. you know, it's not about the negative. This is what you need to do. This is what, what right. you, this is what you need to be really effective doing. Right. And also playing overseas, a lot of people you know, basketball players, we know this, but people out there not involved with the game, when you go overseas, one thing that I learned immediately, I had to become a jack of all trades. I mean, yeah. You go you go over there as a position player and you come back position, which is yeah. most popular today. That was, We were already doing that yeah. years ago. No you know, doubt. My time because I went over there as a, a stretch four and came back <laughs> as a two. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I went over as a two and came back as a stretch four. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you just, right. yeah, that's just how the game was evolving. You know, yeah. guys my size, you know, we, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, bigs are shooting now. No, bigs were shooting back then. You know, yeah. I was, yeah. you know, eight, six, nine, shooting threes, you know, back at that time. because And, yeah. it was, and we made it normal. You know, I yeah. started thinking of guys like Derek Coleman. You know, a yeah. guy who got lost in the shuffle that no one talks about. He never had really a great NBA career with Brad Sellers. But he went overseas as well, and he had a great career. You know, oh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, seven feet, shooting the three, could handle the whole nine. So a lot, it's a lot of guys out there that people still don't recognize that really impacted the game but what it is today. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, um, well, I think, I think yeah, that's yeah, – that, yeah, that's the life experiences, you know, that, that we share because, you know, I didn't have that. You know, I, I'm first generation, you know, uh, you know, playing in NBA, going to Europe and different things like that. So that's why when I was speaking about being wet behind the ears, I had no clue. You know, I mean, I was kind of learning on the fly. And, uh, you know, as as, you know, the type of people you and I are, 
you know, we we like to give back. You know, what I mean, I don't yeah. want to just hold all these experiences and knowledge to myself and, and let a see a young man drown and waste opportunities. Uh, of, you know, for for changing his family, his life. You know, because it's not easy. You know what I'm saying? So when you have someone such as you and I that, like you say, we we've been through it. Uh, we we know it, and we still live it today. And uh, you know that's that's why you know I take pride in, in what I do because I know how important it is, man. Yeah. It's it's important to you know to be able to call someone up and be like, look, man, coach, coach, not playing me uh, a lot right now. Uh, you know, I, mean, I, I want to get up out of here, man. Man, I'm about to I'm about to lose it. Yeah. Okay. So now now I can speak from experience on that. I can speak from experience. I've been through it. I've been through that shoe where. I felt I was a much better player than what uh, they were labeling me as or, or the role that I had to fill. I was a much better player than that. So yeah. I, I got those calls from a lot of guys. And, you know, my advice to them is, look, man, just, you know, unless you got a much better opportunity waiting for you right there, mm -hmm. just, just play your role. Yeah. You know, play your roles, you know. And uh, if you do that, you know, eventually you're going to get your opportunity and take advantage of it. And this is, this is another story that, that happened with me uh, in, in Jerusalem, I wasn't playing. You know, they were bringing me off the bench. And, uh, you know, I, I remember it was write-ups in the newspaper, which I didn't understand it. But I have, you know, friends or teammates call and say, man, that they, they were saying Slay is not good. He can't do this and that. And all that stuff was eating at me. It was eating at me. But what I did do, and I, I thank my mom for that, you know, I, mean, I always kept my character, you know, and I just kept working hard. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. going to show these folks that I can play. And I just kept coming to practice. I kept having a great attitude. Uh, kept working hard. And the biggest game of the year against Maccabi Tel Aviv is was my breakout game. And I had tw 25 in the first half, 10 for 10 from the field. Couldn't miss. I was in the zone. And from that point forward, I changed their minds. Now I had the free before. You know, I was a shooting guard. The coach wouldn't even allow me to shoot a three. But mm -hmm. you know, once I went out there and I stayed patient, I you know I had I had some episodes with the coach. Now, I didn't say I was perfect. Roger Mason, if he was on here, tell you I had a couple situations with Coach Ed's. But but I continued to work hard and I, I listened to him and I, I took advantage of my opportunity. And that's what I'll tell these young guys, man. Just just stay patient, keep working. It's not gonna come on your time, all right? It's yeah. gonna come on God's time when he when he thinks you're ready for that moment. Uh, and you just gotta be ready for it. Yeah, you know, um, you know, just to you know, wrap that part up, what you were talking about. Um, you know, I, I'm actually getting them. I'm getting some rest from those calls right now due, due, due to the pandemic. Uh, because, you know, playing, being in player development and being a former player and coach, and all that, I get calls from all levels. I'm getting calls from kids, high school kids, college players, pro players. You know, everyone has the same discussion that you have right yeah. now, how to make those adjustments. And, yeah. you know, I'm getting a little rest from it right now because of what's going on. You know, thank goodness. But, yeah. but, good. you know, I still enjoy having those conversations because we're able to really bring those guys full circle of where they've been and kind of yeah. give them uh, some direction in the process because that's the thing about it. It's still a process, and you have to embrace it, and you have to embrace every aspect of it. You know, use it as a, as a time to learn something different. You know, I tell guys all the time, when you can't impact the game in, in one area, figure out another way. You know, I had right. a guy call me the other day saying, well, I'm not getting the shots I need to get. So you, I said, you can get a shot anytime you want. He said, how? Get an offensive rebound. You know, right. you, you want to, yeah, you, yeah you, you, that, that creates shots. Uh, you want to yeah. impact the team, you know, get a, get a rebound, advance the basketball, find someone else. Because the thing is, what happens is as you continue to, to feature other people and you figure out ways to help others, it always circles back to you. Right. It's just it's yeah. just a lot, you know, how things work in the game of basketball. But yeah, yeah um yeah, I mean, the second thing I wanted to talk to you about, man, was just the transition. Cause you know, now I was telling the, everyone before you came on how you transitioned from playing to coaching and into other areas. How how was that yeah. transition for you? Because the things you played you're talking about <clears> over <throat> a decade, so Yeah, yeah. I know that transition yeah. had to be tough. Yeah, it was. It was. It was really tough because as a player, you know, it's all about you. You know, it's about your schedule, your workouts, eating your meals, video studies, all those different things. And then once you retire and you, you become a coach, as you know, my college coach once told me as a life coach, now it's not about you. Right. Uh, and mm -hmm. My college coach was Coach Greg White. He was a great motivational speaker now. Uh, yeah. 
it's not about you. It's, it's about that athlete or your team. Or if you're an assistant coach, it's about uh, being a servant to them. And, and, and one of my mentors, uh, Coach uh, Brendan Sarah, who coached with the Bad Boy Pistons, yep. he was the defensive guy. He was the one yeah. guy behind all that. Uh, when you know, because I'm the director of the coaching program for the MBPA, uh, yeah. you know, he's been a coaching director, he's been a coaching consultant for the last 10 years, and he, he taught me so much about you know what it takes to be a coach. And you have to be a servant at that point, it can't be about you when you come in here, you're doing yeah. these workouts, or you're running a practice. Like, you gotta, you gotta provide uh, a, a understanding of keep of, of, of being able to teach an understanding of the game to these athletes. You got to teach them how important fundamentals are. You got to instill a work ethic into them. Uh, you know, uh, you and and the, and the most important thing that 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 I think as coaches we have as life coaches that we got to teach these athletes that all the things that you're learning in basketball is transferable skill, right? So you know, showing up on time, time management, yeah, fighting through adversity, uh, working together, you know, team yeah. teamwork stuff. All those things are so valuable, and that's those that during my transition, those are the things that I, that I've had to learn. But I've been fortunate enough to be around some excellent mentors, which that part of my yeah. life I missed. I missed early as a as a basketball player, you know, having that mentor that I could call up. But now, you know, I got so many great mentors around me. It, it helped my transition uh, quite a bit. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna take a T on that. I'm gonna say thirty second on that. But check this out. That's the part I was talking about. You didn't skip steps. See, the thing is, I was going to talk about the program uh, that you're involved with, with the NBA Players Association in terms of going around being a mentor for players. And you also do a great camp, the Top 100, every summer. I know you've been doing that. And that's been great because you, I think you had a program, a coaching program, I think before that with the NBA. Then you started doing the Top 100 camps where young guys were coming in, and that gave you a chance to mentor them about that transition and also getting involved with, you know, learning aspects of coaching. Because a lot of right. guys skip those steps, and I see that yeah. a lot. And the thing is, you and I didn't skip those steps. You know, it's like when I came out and I finished playing, I started with the seventh grade private school girl. Mm. That, and that moved on to the AAU circuit. From the AAU circuit, I helped a high school team. Then I went from right. high school coaching to I went straight to the minor league. Right. And, you know, then and I coached in the minor leagues to the G League, and, and to then I took a pit stop in college, then went right back to the NBA and, and, and got involved with the, the minor leagues again. So the yeah. thing is, you can't skip steps, I think, as a coach. And I think a lot of young guys today are impatient with that process. Yeah. You know, they just want to jump right to, to the activity. And I tell guys all the time, until you can until, take, get, get, take a seven-year-old in front of you, Teach that seven-year-old. I'm more impressed with you working with that seven-year-old right. than someone that's already there because now that you, you have to. That's when you learn your patience. That's when yeah. that's when you learn about programming. That's when you learn about curriculum. That's when you learn about yeah. all the necessary things to help motivate. All it, it, it teaches right. you how to teach. Right. And I think when I think when guys miss those steps, it affects their ability to sometimes communicate. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes you, you're expecting people to just do things. You don't realize there was steps that were missing their life. And yeah. we, we, have to, we have to plug in those holes. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, that, uh, that's good. Into that. and, and that's what we do today. That's why, I, you know, I'm, so, you know I was, I'm proud of you as I watch you yeah. grow because I, I watch you transition into all this. And, you know, you're really doing a great job. And, you know, who are some of the people that you can highlight that I know that you've already, I know you're involved with now and, is there a few, few, few people out there that you have in mind right now that comes right off the top of your head? Just as uh, far as who I've coached or mentor? Yeah, just mentor, you know, from the league and that kind of thing. Because I know a lot oh, of – I know you yeah. guys. Well, I, I mean, you know, with my role, I'm in the player programs department for the uh, National Basketball Players Association. So I have the Wizards is one of my teams that I'm responsible for. So that right. entire team, uh, the Hornets, of course, Memphis Grizzlies. Wow. Uh, New Orleans Pelicans and Sacramento Kings. So those are my teams. So, you know, I, you know, on a weekly basis, you know, I'm talking with those guys, you know, Good. whether if this is just checking in or, you know, if they need something, they reach out to me. So, uh, I, you know, I take great pride in it. That's a great responsibility because I was that, you know, you know, young kid in the NBA that was, 
you know, little logs, you know, and didn't didn't really know what was next. Uh, you know, it was you know it was a big transition from going from, you know, being in West Virginia my whole life to living in New York. You know, it was a big transition from, you know, basically not having one dime to having a little bit of money in your pocket. Uh, it was a big transition to have, you know, where no one really know, knew you to a lot more people knowing you. So all those different things are stressors that, that these young athletes have to deal with on a daily basis. And then that's where, you know, that's where I, I come in. That's where I stand up in the paint for them and, and mm-hmm. give them the uh, the necessary tools to be able to, uh, you know, get through those situations. And, uh, yeah. you know, I was going to say, uh, yeah, I was going to say that, you know, obviously going through this this transition that we're going through with the pandemic, you know, a lot of guys are sitting around. They don't have the access to certain things. And this is what I mean by development. Uh, I try to, when I was coaching guys, my last acting team, I would always stress to them about finding other things that, that, that tweak your interest within the game and things outside of the game. Because you were talking about, you know, this having downtime. You know, that's why we're that's why we're so important to guys. We try to show them how to handle downtime, you know, how to yeah. value other things and, and, and grow and grow in other areas because this is this is a great opportunity for everyone to grow. You know, this has been a yeah. time for us to grow in other areas. Now, I'm, you know, we're doing different things within our, our business concept because right. you know, we, we have to. And yeah. but the thing is, without those life experiences and, you know, continue to challenge ourselves as we challenge others, you know, we can't grow. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, so that's, that's impressive, man. I, um, yeah. You know, I, I notice uh, a lot of the guys that you work with, you know, I, I hear them speak now. I've seen guys you work with personally, and I, I see how they change. I've looked at their growth. You know, I'm here in Memphis, so I see a lot of guys here because of, you know, the Grizzlies, you know, yeah. like Jaron Jackson, uh, all those guys. Jaren great Jackson, kid. Gr- great I, kid. I coached, I coached with his father in Fort Wayne. And, uh, okay. And he was the man. And I, so I saw him. Jay, little JJ, when he was, you know, just a little guy running around now, you know, he's all right. in the league and everything. But I've seen his growth, and uh, you know, he's, you know, he's mature because of mentorship. You know, of, mm-hmm. of, of, you know, outside of his game, yeah. guys that have played in the league that are, you know, is coming back. And I asked him a question: you know, who's really impacted you a lot from that stand? He said a lot yeah. of mentors have come in and talked to us about, you know, yeah. how to deal with how to deal with life on a day to day basis outside of my, you know, yeah. my father all the time. So. That's good, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's good stuff. It's really good. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, and to go back to what you were saying a little bit, too, about not st- skipping any steps, you know, uh, I'm in, I'm in, I got the position, you know, with the MVPA from participating in their programs. And like you said, doing my downtime in the off season, instead of just, you know, late in my career, instead of just, you know, uh, resting, spending time with family, working out, you know, I started participating in some, some of the programs that the uh, MVPA offers. And that at that point, I was kind of able to reconnect because I've been out of the league for nine years. So I was able to reconnect, establish relationships, learn new yeah. skills, and it put me in position to, to get hired with this job. And, and I, I think, you know, that's what, you know, it's hard. It's hard to tell a young guy that's 20 years old, Mm-hmm. Like you you got a free hour in a day. Just just take a course and do something like that. When you they got you know a couple million dollars in the bank, it's hard for for them to do that. But you know the more you keep saying that to them, the more that you know uh, that that you're around them and you keep like you say pouring into them new information. You know eventually it's going to sink in. It's not going to be on our time. It's going to be on their time when they're ready for. It. But you know that that's that's our role as mentors. Because you may send a text message to a guy. And they don't answer the text right away. But, you know, they, these guys, you know, they got a lot of pressure on them to be able to perform. And especially right now, there's so many unknowns. You know what I mean? Guys' careers are on the line. And then you expect guys been out, sitting out for two months. And if they come back now, now you got to be ready to be at, at, at your top performance. So it, it's a, that's a, that's, a, I know that was a big stress for me. I'm always, making sure that I'm prepared. And, uh, you know, it's about a balance, though, right? You got to have that balance in between, you know, your on-court and off-the-court responsibilities. Yeah, I mean, like I said, do you think – I always ask myself that question sometimes. Would I have picked up those skills if I didn't go overseas? Because the thing is, it's something about people – like, you only notice if you played over there. 
because no one knows right. about what it's like when you go overseas and you're away from everything. Because the thing is, you, right. know, we, you know, this generation, they got social media. You know, I said, hey, I literally had CNN. <laughs> I had, yeah. I had, uh, I had, uh, USA, to, I had USA Today newspaper. Yeah. And we had, we had TNT International. That, that was my media resource when I was Ooh. overseas. And I had Ooh. a calling card. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. That's why I started. Me. So I started off with the media. calling card. Yeah, yeah. I started now, off with the calling card. card. But you had to meet up. You, hey, you had to hey, chill with that because you get on that mug, you'd be on there five minutes. That's it. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. I mean, you, I mean you, you done for two weeks. Yeah, so, yeah. So the thing, people don't even know, like my story overseas, like my media research, you had to have that VCR. See, when I was yeah. overseas, see, these kids don't even know about VCR. Oh, no. A multi-system VCR was critical. <laughs> hey, my dad, my parents were filmed. They would basically put a tape in and film the, oh, the, the just anything. All, all, all day long. So I, when yeah. I was overseas, I wore three of them out just playing tapes all day. When I was right. Home, I had to have something on. You know, you know you have the TV on. <laughs> yeah, you got I, I to. Said, yeah. I said tape, yeah. tape sports center, tape games, give hey, yeah. tape, hey. Tape everything. Now the Cosby show was in rerun that time. I said, just tape it anyway. I don't care. Tape them right. again. I mean, give me yeah. everything. They gonna watch it. Martin, Living Single. See that see those yeah. are my show. Yeah, I remember those though. Yeah, I see, yeah, see, yeah. But I think I think what you're saying though, <laughs> and what we learned to do is adapt. Yeah, you know what I mean. We had to That's adapt, right? To whatever we, what whatever was thrown at us, we learned to adapt. And that transition, we knew we had to adapt. Some folks, like I mean, like you know, when you're in that bubble and you stay in that bubble and everything's given to you and you don't really have to get out of your comfort zone, it makes that transition a little bit harder. When you're just locked in on one thing, in basketball only, maybe you're playing an NBA or maybe you're making yeah. a lot of money, whatever the case may be. I don't want to just this pink say NBA players are in a bubble, but you have to know that basketball is going to end one day and you got to be able to adapt. And if you don't never have to do that for 10, 12 years, when that ball steps stops bouncing, it is scary, right? Yeah. I've had guys call me before NBA guys that have 60, 70 million dollars in the bank, but they say I want to I want to do something. I need a job. I can't just sit around and do the Xbox, PlayStation all day now. I can't yeah. just go work out. I need something to do with my time. And that's why it's so important to pick up a skill, right? Pick up uh, something that you can, that you have, are passionate about, that you want to do. And I think your point is so valid that, you know, going overseas, you had to adapt to some situation where you're like, man, you may be calling back home like, man, this some BS right here. I mean, we had to, when I was in Jerusalem, not to, and Jerusalem was, man, that was one of my best years. And I'm not just saying that was a bad year. For, but I remember we went to, we were playing in the uh, the Eula Cup. And we had to go to, I don't know, Turkey somewhere. But we had to, our hotel was in the mountains. We had to walk, it was middle of winter time. We had to walk like two miles to a cafeteria just to eat. And I remember thinking to myself, like, man, I truly love this game. You know what I'm saying? Because... Yeah. You know, little things like that. And, and, you know, you had just came from shooting. You had just came from practice. And you got to walk two miles to eat, two miles back to eat. And then you got to wake up the next morning, go to shoot around and perform. Like, that wasn't normal. I wasn't used to that. Yeah, and this that's what I'm talking about. See, with this pandemic going on, I've noticed, you know, we're outside again. This, you know, and doing things, you know, working out outside, getting our runs in, shooting outside. This was just a normal for us. But today's generation... They're like, go outside. Yeah, they, they, um, yeah. Like, um, you know, go to the soccer field and do wind sprints, then come back and hoop. Like, that's what we had to do overseas every day. Every like, day. Th that was just, yeah. a, a, you know, so the things we, we were able, like I said, we were able to transition, man, and do that. And that's, yeah. Yeah. That, that's the beauty of it. And that's why we have to tell our stories to these young, you know, the, to the young cats out there, man. And, right. You know, that you, hey, be, hey, always, yeah. hey, always adjust. Always adapt and continue to learn new ways of doing things. Cause that's what that experience, and that's why that's why God put us in that position to yeah. to go through those things, so we can share those stories and give that yeah. insight. Because that's the biggest thing. A lot of people have information. We have we know the information, but we have insight, and at the insight is experience. Because the thing is, you yeah. have to you have to you have to tell people about your experiences 
because you you can help them quickly navigate. Because that's the thing. Right. About that's that's who we are. We're, we're we're like a navigational system for guys. We see them. Right. We'll see things going, and we say, "No, no, make that love." Yeah. Yeah. We know what's getting ready to happen. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Know we know what's getting ready to happen. Yeah. We, we've been there. It's like a seven yeah. and seven rerun. Yeah, well, I, I say that I say that too, kind of in a different way. Uh, my, my college coach, you know, he said he went for the Marshall job, and uh, and and I think he, in order to be a head coach, you had to have your masters or something like that. And he spoke to them about, look, I've been playing basketball for thirty years. I've been coaching for ten. He said, you know, I have my. He said, I'm I'm a doctor in this. You know what I'm saying? I, I understand the ins and outs of the game and. And that's that's how I feel about it. I feel that you know I'm 40 years old now, get, getting old, getting up there. Uh, Dumb, that, but, that basketball has been my life, and and I, I paid my dues, you know, as far as you know, putting in the work as a player. And now I'm just starting with I'm year six now with you know, with coaching and mentoring. But you know, I, I pour my, my 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 blood, sweat, and tears in this, and. I do have a lot of different experiences to show. I, I am a navigational system for these young athletes out here that's that's in middle school, that's in high school, that's that's worried about getting into college or who wants to play on a big AAU team or who wants to be the best player of the team. Like, yeah. I've done it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, yeah. I, I, I've touched all levels. You know what I'm saying? I played high school basketball at a high level. I played Division One. I. I played in the NBA. I played in Europe. Right, that that covers a lot, I, and I had so many different coaches to to pour into me that I was always a student of the game. So I got all that in my pot. I got all that in my pot of still information that I'm willing to give out. You know, what I mean, I give it away for free a lot of times. You know, what I mean, God called me up. So, uh, you know, that's that's what I want young athletes to, you know, uh, when when they are choosing a a mentor, when they are choosing a coach, when they are choosing an organization. To really do your research, you know, uh, on who's who's uh, giving you that information because it is some it is some folk out there who you know, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, we know, you know they, they they know who they are, yeah. you know, that's cheat that's cheating the game a little bit. Yeah. And I, I didn't and I didn't appreciate those guys that that whether it be teammates, whether it be opponents that didn't put in that work, that cheats the game, that bluff their resume, did different things like that. Don't cheat the game because the game is too valuable, man. Like, it's done too much for too many people. So, uh, you know, I, 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 you know that, that's my point on that. And that's why I love that, you know, you're doing with TSB, you know. You know, like I said, with the, with the AAU organization you have, it's, it's great because, like you said, it gives you that chance to, to do all the things that, it, all the things that you've learned over the years, and, yeah. and now you know you got now you got two sons. You know we haven't talked about right. that yet. You know I got my two daughters, right. but you got your two sons, and you know right. your oldest. You know he he he, he, bought, he looks good. You know young yeah, fellas look around. good too. So you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I've been watching them. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're coming around. And, yeah, and yeah. The so. next time I'm gonna talk to you about man, is uh, it's something that we're both doing. I know you're doing it as well as so, you know the virtual workouts. Yeah, you know, I know. I was sitting in here late one night and, you know, I, I knew about people doing virtual workouts, but I never embraced it. So I was in that situation like I was overseas again, trying to figure out, okay, yeah. I got to make an adjustment. You know, we can't, <laughs> right. we can't go into gyms, so we got to figure out another way. So I right. was in here about 11.45 at night, and it just popped in my head. I said, let me go grab the ball go outside. I went outside. I said, you know what? This can work. Then I came in the house. Yeah. It's almost 12 o'clock. Everyone's asleep. I got my daughter out of bed and said, get up. Going that kid. I'm going outside and I'm gonna see if you will respond to he talking to you through this device. Yeah. And I, re I realized I, I was able to communicate better to her from a, yeah. from a certain aspect yeah. through that. And I was like, you know, this can work. Yeah. And I tried it and it's been great. I know that you're doing it too. And uh yeah, you know, I know the challenges I've had with it, you know, people will say, Well, you know, you, you're not in front of me. Yeah. And I tell people, I tell you, you don't understand. I am in front of you. The thing is, this is where our interpersonal skills really c came back into play to all the things we were taught. We, I tell guys that are in development today, you have to be able to speak it, demonstrate it, and give insight with your mouth. And it's a right. way of doing it. It's a way of conveying information. I noticed you're doing that. And, you know, I've seen some of the stuff yeah. you put out there. And uh, I can tell you're doing a good job with it. And 
I want to yeah. hear, you know, your thoughts about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, to your point, we did, we did have to adapt and, uh, and it is very important to be able to articulate uh, your coaching method, whatever that may be. I think that's very important. Your enthusiasm, like on camera, like yeah. you gotta be engaged. You gotta be enthusiastic. You can't be just sitting around, you know, I'm not sitting when I do mine, I'm not just sitting looking at my phone, I got to stand up. I'm going through the drills with them. I'm constantly talking through every movement that they do. So it, as, it is as if I'm there. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the athletes responded, but it, the athletes have responsibility too because it's, it is a different energy uh, with talking through a phone and, and being there in person. But that that's on the athlete because your motivation should be – your motivation should be – it shouldn't be us yelling at you anyway. Now, if you no. really want it, you should be able to go out there in the driveway by yourself and get it in, you know what I'm saying, and, and go game speed and, and understand, okay, on my crossover, I need to be low every time, okay? On my shot figure, I got to get that ball, whatever the case may be. As an athlete, you should be able to do that on your own. Now, uh, yeah. so, so the virtual training is, uh, you know, it, that's it's good enough if you really want it. And I'm speaking to the athletes when I say yeah. that. And then as far as the coaches that get out and do it, now you got to put some energy, some time, some thought into the workout because you got to be real creative. Like, you know, a lot of the kids that I'm training now, they're in the driveway. They're in a small space. So you can't do all the drills that you want to do. So you got to be creative, keep them on their toes, keep them engaged. That's our job as a coach. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's again, we go back to, you know, being able to adapt. You know what I mean? Uh, that's, that's what we've had to do in this situation. And I got, you know, I got about eight clients that I'm seeing, uh, you know, throughout the week. And, man, I can just see the development, though, is working. You know what I mean? They get better. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I do what I do. They get better through the virtual training. So we're going to keep it rolling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I was saying, I mean, I was, you know, I remember I got a question from, some guys at a high level, they'll say, well, how do you take a person that, that's a real beginner? Like, because the thing is, there's three stages, you know, well, actually four stages of development. You know, the first one is that beginner stage. I'm talking about a kid that just, you know, yeah. they don't know anything about footwork. You know, so that I'm finding myself, you know, when I'm doing virtual workouts, giving guys and girls, I mean, you have to really physically show them how to get in position to do certain things when it comes to triple threat, in terms yeah. of where to have your feet, foot placement, the whole nine, hand out right. coordination, working on placement of the ball. I'm talking about to the smallest detail. And the thing is, I found out I've been able to do it based upon a lot of the things that were taught to me when I worked in the corporate structure. You know, they when I worked in the corporate America, just for that short period of time, one thing that my, my boss did a great job of, or our manager, he, he told us, you have to show people how to get from A, B, C, and D. And mm -hmm. the thing is, wow. what happens as players, we just jump in and we just expect everyone to know A, B, C, D. And the thing is, you never come in with expectation of them knowing everything. You right. treat every, I remember my mother said all the time, I'm going to show you how to hold a pencil properly. I'm going to show you how to complete a line, line by line. And it, I don't, it doesn't matter what level you are, we have to do that. And the thing is, yeah. this, this training has given us uh, a great opportunity to do that again and really get back to the basics. But it also puts the onus back on the student to ask questions because they have to talk now. I don't know if yeah. you notice in workouts, there's always, especially when we're in group sessions or individual sessions, we're so in, engaging to the clients that they don't have that opportunity to really verbalize and, and talk and, and really put them, they have yeah. to really speak. Uh, and, and, and they right. have to kind of give you feedback on what they're getting. And I like yeah. this. I like this virtual training for that purpose because it, they're they're able to speak back to me now because I'm asking yeah. questions. You know, they're they're, yeah. they're giving me something to build upon. So yeah, good point. That's good, good point. I think. I mean, I think. I think that's all valid. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that you know, being able to, like you said, teach a kid that's super duper raw on camera. Yeah. I think we got being some able questions. to do that. You got some questions going I think on. We got some questions. What question do we have? Uh, I'm 13 years old, trying to get better. How should my workouts be? What should I be working on for my development? 13 years old, and so she's 13. At, so trying to get better. Trying to get better. What should they be doing? Yeah. You want to take that? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's a 13-year-old, you know, uh, that, that's that's kind of a, a, a broad question, but I think that, you know, it depends on what level you're at now. If you've been playing and you got some experience with it, you know, the, the key is going to be, you know, if, you know, whoever your coach is, you got you have to make sure that you're listening to what they're saying when you're at the practice or you're doing the training session, but you got to be self-motivated. You got to do that stuff on your own. I posted something yesterday with a kid that I had only did two, three individual workouts with, and he was his first year playing basketball, and he has done those drills, I can just tell, relentlessly by himself, and he yeah. looks like a completely different player. And that was the same for me. You know, my high school coach going in from ninth to 10th grade, he gave me probably a handful of drills to do. And I did those drills until I couldn't do them anymore. And I started developing like crazy. I think a lot of young athletes get too caught up with because it's so much available to them, watching YouTube, watching this trainer, that trainer, that trainer, that trainer, and you're trying to do too many different moves when the game's real simple. Work on that jumper, be able to shoot the ball, be able to handle with both hands, be able to pass the ball, and be a student of the game and watch the game, right? Watch study athletes, watch, watch the little things they do, not just sports in the top ten. You know, watch, listen to the commentators. Most of the commentators in NBA game, college games, are all former players that really have a great understanding of the game. So, you know, I think if you want to be better, those are the steps you take. Find a coach that you trust. Stay, stick with him, right, or maybe one or two others. You know I mean? Stick with coaches that, as we talked about earlier in this, of, 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 well, do your homework. Make sure these guys know what they're talking about and just do those drills so you can't do them no more. And this game's easy, young fella. It's easy, really. Yeah, uh, really, you know, just to finish your point, you know, master the basics. Uh, right. You know, I tell guys all the time when they come in, everything begins with your feet. You know, if if you if your footwork is tight, everything else is going to be good because you have to learn to play first through the balls of your feet. So you need to be spending a lot of time doing things that require footwork. I'm really big on that. Uh, you're playing out of a stance. You know, we talked about, you know, staying low, 45-degree angle, attacking, you know, a player, learning how to attack someone's hip. You know, mm. that's the thing, because you're not attacking their shoulders, you're attacking their hip. You know, the next thing, work on a build your mechanics through, you know, as far as your hand-out coordination. You do a lot of drills that impact that. You know, continue, obviously you got, that, that, that includes handling the basketball, making sure that, you know, the, the, the dominant part of your, your, the, your fingers and your thumb dominates the basketball when you dribble, having a, a full understanding that, like, we do these basic drills with people just pounding the ball. I know what you're doing, and people, the ball is wobbling. You say, no, get that ball under control where it's on a string. You know, we talk about that a lot, you know, and those are things you have to stress, you know. From, from your shop standpoint, you have to develop – the mechanics of proper shooting. You know, everyone has a different shot to a certain degree, but there's certain fundamental things that, that are just absolutely, they're, they're automatic. Your elbow has to get back under the basketball to get a proper release. And the right. thing is, we have to, and so for that, whoever asked that question, you know, work on your shot every day. You know, and the thing is, when you work on shooting, it's not just standing still and shooting. You got to know how to catch and shoot on the move. Because the thing yeah. is, you, you, might, you might get maybe three or four shots a game standing still. But the majority of the time, you gonna be, you everything's with pace. You gotta be moving. You gotta be going north, south, east, west, everything. So yeah, yeah so all those things have to be kind of identified in that process of uh of your development. I didn't know. If I would add, yeah, I would add, I would add one more thing to that too. Uh, with these young athletes, a lot of them, you know, you come in and you're eager. You want to get better. You spend two, three weeks and you start getting better, and then you get bored with it. Right, mm -hmm. you get bored yeah, with bored. it, and then you then you stop working. Now you you got to go in on those days where you don't feel like doing nothing at all, but sitting around playing Xbox. You still got to have the discipline to get up your reps, right? You still got to be self motivated and be able to get to that court or get to that weight room or get that conditioning in on days when you don't feel like it, and it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop at. Uh, uh, it doesn't stop at two or three weeks and you start seeing the W have one or two good games. You got to keep building. You got to keep building every single day. Of course, you get days off in between. But, like, if you're if you're talking about being one of the top athletes and earning a scholarship to college, this has to become a lifestyle. You know what I mean? Your, your, your family, schoolwork, and basketball, those three things 
shouldn't change. They got to be consistent right. every single day. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of athletes don't understand that. They think, you know, I, I can grind for three weeks, I can grind for a month, and then I can take two, three weeks off. Nah, you're getting lost. You're getting left right. behind. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw that. I saw where your, your wife just said that getting lost in the process. I just saw that comment. Or, or you get yeah. lost. And the thing yeah. is that, that, that happens a lot, typically between the ages. I've noticed, I've done the percentages. Normally, this happens between the ages of 11 and 13. It's something about 11 and 13, between that time, for boys and girls, it's like other interests kick in. Because you see that they, they're so excited about it early. And then the time right. they hit 11, other things start to kick in. You know, it has something to do with middle school and making that adjustment yeah. and going yeah. through those changes. Because I remember when I was 11 and 12, you know, I, I, I went from wanting to play ball, I wanted to go into break dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, then all of a sudden, hey, I found myself beatboxing. And I went, oh, I went man. And all of a sudden, by the time I hit 13 or 14, something yeah. happened. I went right back to where I really, you know, I, I got back into yeah. the game again. Yeah. Is, you, you, you're right. Uh, it's just something about that time I noticed and keeping kids engaged. So what I try to do is I try to shorten things with them. I tell them, I said, look, find 10 minutes to work on this aspect, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. And what that does, that breaks it. So yeah. You just break it up. And, and then the thing is, as they break it up, they find themselves right back doing what they yeah. need to be doing. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just finding creative ways to kind of, you know, break that monotony. And, you know, sometimes it's yeah. tough because, yeah. it, it, you know, you, you, it, we're dealing with different personalities. And, you know, today yeah. there, there are a lot more um, a lot more distractions, you know, with the yeah. phone, et cetera. So My son. one thing, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was gonna say my son Bryce. Uh, he's he just turned fourteen in March, and uh, and you can you can ask him. I, I've never been a dad to say we working out at this time. You get your butt up and go. It's always you better come holler at me. You better come holler at me when you want to work. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna force him because I already know that it's not gonna be up to me of how bad I want it for him. Right? If he wants to play at Duke as he says he wants to, it's gonna be all on him and. You know, it's a process to that, too. You know what I mean? He, he's, a, you know, I, I, I'm putting it in front of, I'm dangling the fruit in front of him. I'm showing him how great it is to, to, to be a Division One athlete, and he has yeah. to come get it. I can't get behind him and push him there, you know, physically. You know what I mean? But I, I it's, it's it, of course, it's different things that I say that's going to motivate him to get him out there doing things uh, on the court. But, you know, again, I, I saw uh, – one of one of my coaches says self motivation is on here, and I think you know I think that's as a as a as an athlete as a as a human being, you have to be self motivated. I think that's very important. Yeah, I see. Uh, I see another hey, man, one on a, here. That, that's a show. That's a show right there that you just said. You know that I, that's a segment we need to really dive in on. Players and dealing with their children. In terms of that <laughs> development process, because the thing is, it's like we sit, we know every, we know all the things that you have to do, and it's like we're in the house with you, and it's like sometimes the biggest fight sometimes is to get them moving where you're working all these other people. It's like no, you got to get out of here. Like no, you got to yeah. you, you got to come to me just like everyone else is coming to me. Like you just yeah. expecting me because you're entitled because you're with me to just have access to all this. Right. But you just yeah. like you got to come grab it from me. Right, you got a schedule. You got the genetics. Bro. <laughs> you, got, yeah. you got the genetics. You, you you got all the all that stuff by birthright, but you you, you yeah. still got to put the work in. Yeah, you got to so, put it in. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, so yeah, man, that, that's great, man. I, man, I wish we yeah. didn't have to go, man. I'm, yeah. Oh man, I wanted. To, can I? I got I got a second to address. Uh, Coach Coach Jackson, a, a guy I battled against in high school. He used to kick my butt. He was older than me, my brother's age, and uh, he, he's talking about on here, you know. Uh, you know, when I've spoken before, I talked about my journey to the NBA, and it, it never was about. And and and, and it, this could go either way. You could have that goal playing in the NBA and go for it. For me, though, for someone that may can relate to what I'm saying, is that I never coming from back to West Virginia, a small town like that. The NBA was like Michael Jordan was the man at the time. That was a far, far, far away dream. But I took. I took it in different baby steps to where, you know, my high school coach was a big influence. Winning the championship was the most important. I took it that route where uh, I, I trusted the guys that was in front of me 
And I did, I gave, I poured 110% into that coach uh, and what they were teaching me and, and my teammates and about winning. All those things were the most important for me. It never was about, I need to go out here and get 30 points so I can earn a scholarship. Never once in my brain did that thought ever pop into my head to where I felt that I had to have a certain amount of points in order to earn the scholarship. My main goal was winning. I needed to win. And whatever it took to win, take to the win, it may have been I ended up with 30 points. So those that, that – and everyone has their own thought press. Of it. I'm not saying one, one is right and one – and the other is not. But my, my goal was always of, of, of playing the game the right way and winning, doing whatever it takes to win. And, you know, I ended up getting drafted into the NBA with that mentality. So that works too, young athletes. Let me tell you something. Hey, what you said is absolutely right. You ain't got to apologize for that. What you said is exactly right. And that's, that's what we mean by the transition. That's why it's important that players pull from guys like yourself, and me, because they, they need that type of information. And the thing is, they, they don't need Instagram, you know, trainers. They need guys that, that have insight. They need guys that, not not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying there's nothing, you know, seek information. There's no problem. But the thing is, go to guys that have played the game. That's my message yeah. for everyone there. You know, yeah. guys that have actually done it. Because the thing is, there's yeah. nothing like, you know, when, when somebody has an alcohol problem, they go to people that, that have dealt with alcoholism. Right. Same thing with, right. with, with anything else. You got to you have to go to people that have been there. You know, they right. they, they know about everything from an in depth standpoint. So right. those things are important, man. That's why people yeah. need to. You know, I think you're on this tomorrow slate basketball. Go to that people. Call tomorrow. If you're yeah. in North Carolina, if you're in the you're in, you're in South Carolina. You in those areas anywhere. Go to him. You know, it's like Kevin with the basketball service. I'm available. I'm here. I'm based out of yeah. Memphis, but we're all over the place. We're we're speaking to people from a global standpoint now. So the thing is, if yeah. you're out there right now and you need our services, you know, definitely call us. You know, we we have Instagram. I think what's your Instagram? A uh, slate training. Okay. Yeah. Slate so, training. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, I have Kevin with yeah. the basketball service. I'm I'm on IG, Facebook. You know everything, so we're easy to find, and we're yeah. willing to, to do whatever's necessary to help elevate the game. And like I said, I just want to thank exactly. you for coming on this morning. I wish I had more time. I got to get to work. Yeah, I, just tell her, yeah. I got me clients, too. you know, me. texting me. And yeah. like I said, man, we, we're gonna do this again. And uh, yeah, let's I, do it again, I, man. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on this morning, man. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna keep this moving, man. So tell okay. everybody I said hello, and you know, how okay. proud the kids from the whole nine, man. And, Okay. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, man. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. I had fun, man. Thank you. Oh, yeah. This was great, man. I'll see you in a little okay. bit. All right, okay. Now. All right. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, that was great this morning. Um, you know, having tomorrow, on, that was awesome, man. You know, I... Unfortunately, you know, I have to go to work. I got to get on the, out, on the courts outside and get back to the virtual training. But, yeah, definitely look him up. You know, he's a great resource for uh, development as well as, you know, myself. You know, I like to, you know, promote guys that are really doing the right things with the game. And he's definitely one of those guys. And So, anyway, hey, thanks for joining us today. Uh, if you want more information about us, you can always go to KevinWittedBasketball.com. You can also go on um, IG as well. Um, and look us up as well to, to see uh, more episodes. You can see this episode again on Facebook and on IG later on today. So, hey, you guys have a wonderful day. Keep it pushing. I'll see you in the next episode.